This is video number two in the hog processing series I'm putting together. The uh, pigs we uh, slaughtered on that day, we did three and we hung them in my shop. So this is not the you know clinical, sterile sort of environment that you may see other processing videos take place in. It's more homestead style, use what you got, you know, don't let not having a complete uh, tiled, hard surface, stainless steel table environment keep you from producing your own meat. So basically what we did was cover some of my shop tables with plastic and work on those and the primary concern is that the meat stays clean free of dust and whatever so you know it's not uh, a, a sterile environment but it was a cold time of year this was done seasonally you know the uh, fall time is a good time to process pigs because the nights get cold and it was probably about 30 degrees when we process those pigs and it got down to about uh, 28 the night that we hung them and you want to make sure that you get your meat well chilled as quickly as possible to avoid spoilage and also you uh, want the meat to set up and become firm so that when you make your cuts you can have good clean cuts and not uh, have something that's sloppy and looks like you went at it with a hatchet. Uh, there are a few tools that I use in this process that you may not have access to, primarily the oscillating multi-tool, which is kind of a, a niche, you know, Finnish carpenter sort of thing. Um, but all of the same cuts that I make with that can be made with just a bone saw or a hacksaw or even a cleaver. So, you know, you can adapt to the gear that you've got on hand. Essentially, what I would recommend is a good eight inch boning knife and a bone saw. Um, and as I say, you can also use a hacksaw. Bone saw is essentially the same sort of thing, only longer, slightly larger teeth, but a coarse hacksaw blade works just as well. While we still have the side intact, first we remove the kidney, like so. You can Put these in pate or grind them in with your sausage or make a kidney pie. Right along the spine here you'll see the tenderloin. So before we break out the quarters we will want to get that free. So what you want to do is come along the spine, angle the blade up toward the back of the animal. So that spine comes in there and we're just going to follow along as close as we can along here like so and then you can come back and just take long strokes down to the ribs pull the meat forward follow the ribs as they turn back down once you've got it mostly free to where the head of the tenderloin is up here by the pelvis then you can start to free it up from the ribs, kind of pull it away, like so. And then we can come back from the other side and free it from the leaf lard that's here. And I'm kind of scooping under it to get as much of that head with it as we can. We're just cutting it off right here where the H-bone is, the pelvis. 
there's our tenderloin. So we want to pull the little bits of fat that are with it off. And there is silver skin. Up toward the head end. This was that way. So we'll just trim out most of that. Then there's a chain along this side. That you can just pull free and that will just go into our sausage grind like so. And that's pretty good. We can leave a little bit of this leaf lard if we want. Just makes it tastier. So that is your tenderloin of pork. So the kidneys out, tenderloins off. Next thing is pull this leaf lard. These are the diaphragm muscles in here that regulate the breathing. And so we want to come on the other side of those. And we're basically coming down to the ribs in there. And then you can see the seam between the belly fat and the leaf lard here. So we'll just come along that seam, loosen it up there. We're mostly just trying to get this to a place where we can start peeling it. Come along the inside of the ribs here. Free up our diaphragm muscles there. And just kind of pulling and peeling. Sorry about my squeaking table. All right. Not like so. We don't want to get into the belly too much. We've got a little bit of meat in this lard that my lovely assistant will trim out and put in our scrap pile. So there's our belly and we'll pull that diaphragm muscle out. So now we're ready to bust this thing into the primals. First thing we'll do is we'll pull off this trotter here. We didn't skin the trotters in this particular instance. You can see that there's a bone right here that's like the heel bone. So we're coming down below that, down to the joint, and then we'll saw that. those if you want but we're pushing it doing three pigs all at once short daylight so some things are not going to happen this time around so I've got the uh, hawk here we'll pull that off also while we're at it with the saw here okay just want to use the saw on the bone Knife on any of the flesh, one ham hawk. Then you can see this curvature where the lumbar meet the coccyx vertebrae. That's our line. We're going to come straight across. There is a little bit of belly that's on the other side of the line. So I'm going to come down, not cutting in to the thigh muscles, and just free up that little corner. And then we're going to pick a line right down from that turn in the spine coming underneath with my blade pointed up to it and then in from the top right to that and then we just have 
I cut through the spine and then there's a little bit of the pelvis that will grab with this too. <laughs> our cut and there's the ham quarter now over here at the front end make sure you guys can see this we're going to come in between the fifth and sixth ribs so you can feel them one two three four five right here and this will give us just a little bit of the scapula in the loin section and we're coming up just about where the sternum ends so we'll have a little cut there and then back up and you can see where these feather bones are coming in you can feel those come down between those at that same vertebral junction like so then we've got two cuts with the saw through that sternum there and then through this section of spine like so then we can come under blade up So, so now we have it divided into thirds. The next step is to separate the loin section from the belly section. And what we're looking for here, you can see the eye of the loin here, and you can approximate a good pork chop bone length. Sometimes you'll see these just split in half. I like more bacon than that, so I'm going to come up about here. And then I'm just going to do an initial cursory cut between the ribs, like so. Then after that, these are all just kind of floating ribs. So we'll go straight over here. And I'm looking at the eye of meat back here to turn to where that is. Now, what I like to do for cutting these ribs is to use... The multi-tool, oscillating multi-tool, we'll just cut the ribs here. Then we're also going to come back and cut the ribs at the top to remove the chine bone and the feather bones. And then we can just cut, leave the ribs on for boning pork chops till about here. Then we'll bone all this out and do boneless chops at the bottom. In this section of the loin, my phone stopped recording, so I missed the, uh, the breakdown of this portion. You didn't miss much. All I essentially did was square off the bacon, and um, you know, there's not a whole lot that's missing from this footage. You'll get the basic idea. Fortunately, this was the easy part of breaking down the pig that uh, the camera stopped recording during. And uh, otherwise, it's all there. Make you wanna move. All right, so we use the multi-tool to cut the chine bone off and the bottom of the ribs. So now, the portion size on these will just be controlled by the distance between the ribs. And then we'll just make nice straight cuts through there. So that's your chop. Now it's up to you how much fat you want. I'm going to trim these down to about a quarter inch or so. Then we'll render that for lard. Let me press on here. So I'm just going to cut each chop between the bones. Just like so. So these will be our bone-in chops. We'll also 
do boneless chops out of our other section of loin. So you could, if you wanted to leave this hole as a boneless loin roast, you could do that. If you wanted to cure it and smoke it and make Canadian bacon, you could do that. But in this case, boneless chops it is. Breakfast chops. So the other option, rather than trimming these individually, you can just come in here and trim back the fat. Like so. And that all goes to lard. And we can just come through. Give ourselves a three quarter inch chop. These are pan friable thickness. And that's what we got there. So, we'll go ahead and move to the rear quarter. So we've already cut the hawk off our ham. This is our ham section here. Top and bottom around. This H-bone in here is particularly funky. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take these tail vertebrae. Cruise right along them. I'm kind of angling my knife down underneath and then on this bone I'm going to come around this pelvis here and it goes down and then back up so I'm trying not to go much deeper than about like that with my knife come all the way down to where that femur attaches to the pelvis there then I'll come back around the underside of those last vertebrae here freeing up that and back up to where that meets the edge bone, the pelvis in here, and then this bone travels down to where you can see when we cut it away from the loin and belly sections. So I come over to it, work my knife along, and you can feel it makes a few twists and turns. And just go slow, keep your blade in contact with bone, don't cut too deep and trace out this side of it. Not like yeah, and you can stop and feel where everything is. So then we're gonna come up this side, back to where the joint is, in there. And then we need to come under it we've got all this free and we're just going to come under that pelvic bone and that frees it up pretty well so now it's just that rotator joint you can see where the tendons are and if you cut a few of those you can then spin it And that'll free it up myself. Funky bone. But we'll make stock out of that. So now, there are lots of ways you can break this down for various tied roasts and that sort of thing. What we're going to do... Okay, we'll go bone out. Alright, so <clears throat> if you just pull this off here in line with the top of that femur head then you have your ham here square it off a little bit this will be in the grind for sausage or for stew meat so there basically is your bone in ham and you could cure it smoke it just like that they want two pieces on this so you can see where this muscle comes through the head of the femur is there. This is where we cut the shank off. And so if you follow this seam, keep your blade 
on that bone. This is the easiest way to pull this femur. Now you've got a lot of patella, you know, kneecap going on in there, a bunch of tendons, so it gets a little strange. But just follow it around. You can then get underneath all that and just realize that it's fatter at the knee, more tendons going on, that sort of thing. Right along the ball on that bone. And this is where that kneecap is down here. Just kind of stay close to it. Come around. Be mindful of where your fingers are. Freeing up, there's the back side of that kneecap. So I'm going to come around it like so, and we're free of the femur and the knee joint. So now we have a boneless ham. If you want to do a boneless whole ham, you could tie it like that. But we're going to split this into two and sort of have two approximately equal hams. We're going to come in right about at the edge of that muscle there. And now we have two approximately equal sides of boneless ham. We'll cure and smoke these. Boneless ham. This we're just going to break down into a couple of nice rump roasts right along there. We'll leave them nice and fatty so that when they roast it, it will be a self-basting cut. And that leaves us with the shoulder quarter right here. So once again, we have a few ribs here and we'll cut those through the shine bone with our buzz bomber. Should be able to come right underneath those. Once again, angling our blade to the bones. Around the sternum. About like so. like that. Then we'll clean up this bloodshot business up around where we bled her out. And there is another rack of ribs. Then over here we're basically going to pull out all of this Spine, chine bone, feather bone. Give us a good look at what's underneath. As we do more of these, we'll get more familiar with the anatomy and where the various curves and turns are. All right, that will go to stock. So now we have two bones essentially remaining we're going to have to deal with. We have the scapula we have the humerus. We'll pull off this other talk over here and we'll put it with everything we're going to smoke. So 
this flappy bit here we're going to remove following along this seam here and we'll go through this for grind for our sausage and then the elbow right here the bone comes up through there so we'll cut there and then turn back down to that joint use our saw again to take that portion So, one more hawk, then the most glorious part of the pig, second only to the meat that's behind the eyeball in the head, is going to be this capicola over here, the capo, the cape, if you will, so you can see where the eye of this muscle is. So we're going to come down right here to the scapula, which is right here, and then cut out from there. And you can see a natural fascia separation there, that seam, and roll it out as we separate it from that shoulder blade. And if you wanted to make a capicola ham, this is your cut right here. That glorious beast right there is money. How you want your capital, Rod? Um, thirds. Thirds it is. So if you want to make particularly phenomenal sausage, this is a great piece to use. It's got the perfect ratio of lean to fat, or it makes a fine roast, or you can dice it up however you want to do it. So now, to get down to the joint for the shoulder blade, there's a little bit of a kind of a flank steaky bit here that we usually just dice up for stew meat. Basically everything on top of the shoulder blade down to this seam here. So Rod will dice this up for stew meat. Pick through it, clean it up. Green chili. Green chili. There will be a link for the green chili in the description below. So you can feel the edge of this scapula. So right down here is the shoulder joint. And we've got another ball and socket arrangement there. The underside, which is actually the outside of the animal, of this scapula has two ridges. You can see the little valleys here Underneath there are two corresponding ridges that kind of go straight down. So it's very strange bone to try to Excavate so what I'm doing is I'm following the outside edge of it and then I'm cutting as deep as I can toward that rotator cuff and I can feel the ridge there and I'm just sliding my knife until I'm in line with where that ridge is then I'm going to take a turn down and I'm going to get under it. And when I feel where the bottom of it is, I can go in here and look. And I'm going to come over and then back up like that. This is a little tricky. Don't be concerned if you bugger it up a bit. you got to do that a few times before you get any good at it. And then I'm going to come around, same way, back at it like this, until I reach that ridge again. Now at this point, once we've freed it all up, it's just a matter of coming down, 
where that joint is. So I'm leaving a little meat on the bone here. And if you got a good buddy like Rod, he'll go through and scrape some of that off there to be used for sausage grind. We like sausage, so rather than spend too much time getting too detailed on getting these bones out, we'll just tune them up a little bit. And whatever's left on this thing is going to end up going in the stock anyway. So you can see I've left a little bit of muscle there. All in all, not too terribly bad. So now, what we have is the joint here. There's still the humerus in here, and that's the only bone left in this pig. So up here on the top portion of the shoulder, we pulled our capicolo out. This is prime sausage meat. So I'm going to clean this up here. Technically speaking, you could take this piece here, cure it up, and smoke it for bacon. But we're going to go ahead and pull off these couple little bits of, of good usable meat, grind them in our sausage. Then this is your picnic ham, so that shoulder ham right there. We're going to pull a couple of good shoulder roasts off the outside of that. How do you want your uh, picnic ham, Rod? On, on, on a sunny day. On a sunny day, he says. All right, so these are going to be a couple of shoulder roasts. We'll trim out a little bit of this bloodshot bit where we blood this animal out. And then cut this into a couple of nice family style roasts. And wrap it up. And then we're just going to bone out that shoulder roast, that shoulder ham, picnic ham. Okay, there's two boneless shoulder roasts. Boneless shoulder roast. And what's left, square this up, trim that for sausage. And it's still got the bone in right here, so you could cure and smoke that as a smaller ham to enjoy on a sunny day. Or, as we're going to do here, we'll just leave these green, as they say, and cured. And then, later on in the winter, when these guys are hungry and they're digging around in the freezer, it's up to them if they wanted to pull it out and cure it, smoke it for something, smoke it like pulled pork, a pork butt, if you will. Or just pop it in as a pork roast. I like the pork roast. Braised and pork smart. We like our braised pork roast. Alright. So, there's our humorous out. Certainly usable for our grind. Another bone for the stock. Now, we've got essentially three nice joints that we can pull out of this. It's kind of following the natural seams of the muscles. And there we go. So, that's for when you're having a party. These two are just family dinner size. And look at that, we are out of pig. So that's how we break it down for the cuts that we put in the freezer immediately. And then we've got the lard to render, the leaf lard to render, the sausage to grind, the bacon to cure, the hams to cure, all of that coming up. That's breaking down the side of a pig in a nutshell. And when we wrap these cuts, we're using a plastic lined butcher paper and in this case we used actually ram board tape which is a special tape that you use to tape down a protective uh, surface over a floor during a construction remodel but 
freezer tape, anything like that will work. Masking tape. Masking tape tends to fail at cold temperatures, so a specific freezer design masking tape is a better idea. And so you just wrap the meat in the, in the butcher paper, tape it, label it, date it, throw it in the freezer, and you're good to go. Uh, be sure to check back in for the rest of the videos in the series. Next, we'll be making bacon. Hope you guys enjoyed it. It's going to mean the roots down, where the red is